All right, top of the hour. Welcome everyone to uh, the MPF webinar and our 38th uh, of our series on uh, the future of law, uh, helping managing partners, leaders of smaller mid-sized law firms be more effective in uh, today's challenging uh, world of, of the business of law. And this month we turn to our topic of chat GPT and uh, let me roll in and uh, introduce our speakers. My partner in crime, Uri Gutfreund, bailed on us this week. Uh, some excuse about flights and delays and nonsense like this, but he won't be with us today. I'll be running solo. Uh, so normally Uri and I would banter a little bit, but uh, I'm talking to myself. Some uh, brief announcements, then we'll jump right in. Uh, we do these webinars on the third Wednesday of every month and have been pounding them out pretty religiously. Uh, as I mentioned, this is our 38th since uh, we all got sent home by COVID. Uh, our next in-person conference is our fall symposium. It's going to be October 4th, 5th in Chicago at the University Club of Chicago. And we're going to feature an all-women faculty and uh, deal with uh, empowering women and law firm leadership. Uh, space is limited. If you're interested, check us out and sign up sooner than later. Uh, we do our newsletter every week on Fridays, our website's out there. So we're trying to help law firm leaders be more effective in the challenging, often ill-defined role. Uh, today's topic, AI, chat GPT, 135 managing partners, firm leaders registered for today's program. Uh, we will feature results of surveys when y'all registered. We have live audience polling. Uh, coming out of this today's program, we'll send an on-demand recording to everyone registered. We'll, we have a nice set of handout materials. Thank you, Tony, who we'll introduce shortly. And we will also write up a recap of today's, uh, today's program. Always looking for your feedback. Tell us how we do. So at the conclusion of our program, you'll be directed to a real short online survey. Uh, give us your feedback, particularly interested in topics for future webinars. Want to introduce a new business partner, uh, Nine Sale, and they do search engine optimization and pay per click type uh, services for law firms. And uh, their uh, principal, Joe Giovanelli and Sarah Brodsky, are here, and they're going to do a write up for us about a thousand words. And so we want to thank the folks at Nine Sale for their participation, support of our webinar series. Our guest speakers, let's get to the meet. Rosanna Berardi, managing partner, Berardi Immigration Law. She's in Buffalo, New York. How are you, Rosanna? I'm great. Thanks for having me, John. Well, and thank you. And uh, joining Rosanna and I is Tony D. Simone who's the president of Yen LLC. You'll learn more about that because it does beg the question. And uh, Tony's an adjunct professor at the University of Buffalo and is working on his PhD in chat GPT. So Tony, welcome. Sir, thank you. Well, thanks for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Well, we are delighted to have you and look forward to uh, what you have to share with our audience. You know, <laughs> hot topic, hot topic. Uh, our spring conference in Atlanta, many of you came. Uh, we, we didn't get on it. And a couple of you said, hey, John, AI, AI, chat GPT. And one of those people was Rosanna Berardi, who came charging up to the <laughs> stage at one of the breaks and said, John, we need to do this. And so <laughs> be careful what you ask for. So uh, Rosanna, thank you for being the impetus behind today's program. Uh, people are trying to figure this out. We're here to help. This is a huge opportunity for smaller, mid-sized law firms who will seize the opportunity and run with it. Don't hide. Uh, so here's our lawyer off the cliff, kind of blindfolded. <laughs> hey, we're here to help you come back off that cliff, take off that blindfold, and uh, get a handle on what you need to know, what you should be doing with this uh, this relatively new 
a phenomenon called ChatGPT. To get us kicked off, Tony, Rosanna, uh, we always ask, uh, just to get a sense of our firm sizes represented on today's call and to equip you guys with your voting devices. And I like to remind people that I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, where we know how to count votes. <laughs> so <laughs> there's been some news in Atlanta this week, but uh, tell us if you would uh, your firm sizes. Uh, so that'll help uh, Rosanna and Tony frame some of their comments. And here's what we have uh, in terms of firm sizes represented on today's call. Thank you for those of you who voted. Uh, we're gonna, don't, don't lose those devices because we're gonna ask you vote a couple of times during our program. Uh, again, mostly for Tony and Rosanna to frame some of their comments, we wanna ask you your familiarity with ChatGPT and all it can do. How would you characterize your familiarity with this beast? And Rosanna, I'm going to ask you to predict. Uh, where do you think most of uh, today's participants sit in terms of their familiarity with uh, this tool? I'm going to say somewhat familiar. And Tony, what do you think? I'm going to say somewhat familiar. However, what it really should be is heard of it. You know, I, I think that's what it's really going to turn out to be. Well, they claim oh, to be somewhat that. familiar. They, that's the claim. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's a room full of lawyers here. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll test them out a little bit on some of this. But uh, mm -hmm. that gives you a sense of where people are. Uh, when folks registered, we asked the question a little different way in which term best describes your use of chat GPT. It looks like a lot of firm leaders are starting to tip their toe in, uh, into the water. Uh, no one's describing themselves as a power user quite yet. Uh, no, what are your no, biggest no concerns? Chat G, no chat GPHDs yet out there? <laughs> Not yet. Tony, you're no, leading okay. the way, creating the program for us. Uh, we asked today's crowd uh, what your big concerns are from this list. Pick one. Tony, is that a legitimate concern? I, the I, reliability I and accuracy? For 100%, and we're going to talk about that, yes. Yeah, we are. Confidentiality, the ethics around yes. all this. Yeah, those, Rosanna, those top two, for sure. Yeah. Rosanna, are we missing anything that uh, you think uh, law firm leaders should be concerned about? I think the biggest one for law firm leaders is accuracy and reliability. That's the one that's forefront of most people's minds. There it is. We're going to talk about hallucinations and all this sort of stuff in a little bit. And we asked as well, when you registered, uh, what do you want to learn about most uh, in our hour together? We can't cover it all, but uh, Tony has picked up on the queue here, and we're going to give him about 15 minutes of undivided uh, attention here to kick us off at that 40,000-foot uh, level and tell us what we need to know. And Tony, I think this is where I make you the presenter and you're gonna take us, take us over here. Sounds great. Uh, it might be, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so Tony, I see okay. your, uh, your, your stuff on our screen. And uh, yeah, I like the image. Thank you. That's, uh, uh... A chat GPT AI called Mid Journey. All the pictures you're going to see are Mid Journey AI pictures. You just said us a little feel of your background and why you're so into this. Well, I, my background, I'm a CPA and I'm also a CMA, which is a certified managerial accountant, which is sort of like the CPA for inside operational accounting. Um, what I do is I help small businesses of all different industries to help improve profitability and cash flow, uh, turnarounds, um, you know, and help scale and coaching, things like that. I got into AI because, uh, as you're going to learn, ChatGPT became beta in October of 2022, so not that long ago. And uh, what I realized is to create efficiency even faster is through this AI because uh, ChatGPT is just the beginning 
and I'm going to show you some things on what I mean by that. Uh, but this just only enhances the efficiency and uh, the ability to scale as a small business owner and, and can help in a way that every small business is struggling right now. It's so hard to find people, good people, people in general. Uh, so leveraging AI can make a huge difference in that. So that is why so, I added that. And how'd you meet up with Rosanna? I'm curious how you guys... I am an adjunct professor at the University of Buffalo Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, and that's basically uh, business owners who are looking to, to achieve essentially a mini MBA. Rosanna is a member of the CEL, Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, and that's how we met, gosh, years ago, right, Rosanna, six, mm -hmm. seven years ago? And yeah. um, we've, been, we've been together ever since. <laughs> Does she behave herself uh, well uh, at the at the classes and such? You know what? She is a lawyer and she speaks her mind, and I love it. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> yeah, and, and John, if I, if I can oh. just add the the program that Tony leads up at the University of Buffalo has single handedly transformed my business. Um, I I attended the initial program way back when in 2017 and. Um, I can say with a great deal of confidence that the success that I've had in the last six years has been solely owned to UB, University of Buffalo, and Tony's had a lot to do with that. Wow. I, I hope you're getting royalties, Tony. <laughs> you know what? Don't even want them. Don't need them. I'm just so appreciative. I'm, I'm so grateful. It's cool to kind of put things in context and how you guys, you know, came to, because came to, Rosanna, I am so impressed by some of the stuff you're doing. I really, truly am. So thank you again. My pleasure. Back to you, Tony. Thank you. All right. So before we get into ChatGPT, I want to start with what is ChatGPT, a little bit of the origin story, because I, I think it's it's quite interesting. So ChatGPT is a language model developed by a company called OpenAI. Now, OpenAI uh, was started by the CEO, Sam Altman. And when it began, it was receiving a lot of money donations, essentially, from benefactors, mostly from Silicon Valley. One of the most famous ones is Elon Musk, and he gave approximately $100 million. Now, the whole idea for open AI was simply this, to advance AI in a safe and beneficial way with the ultimate aim, creating a more positive future for humanity. And originally it was structured as a nonprofit organization to promote transparency and cooperation in AI research. So what they envisioned, what um, everybody was envisioning at the time was create an open source type of, of um, uh, product that others can use so that they can take what chat or what open AI is creating and then build on it and just help the world and, and make it happen faster. So Tony, who, who owns it today? Open well, AI. Who, who owns we're it? We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Okay. I'm so, jumping ahead. Sorry. You're jumping ahead. In 2019, <laughs> Open AI went from non for profit to a for profit company with the aim of accelerating the development of AI technologies. Now, when that happened, Elon Musk didn't like that because he did not like the idea of any one company potentially owning this product because of the power that they could have with it. So he left, but months later, Microsoft jumped in and Microsoft invested $10 billion in OpenAI to purchase essentially 49%. So think about this. A buh, Chat GPT, buh, right? A buh billion, huh? B, B. So yeah, ChatGPT yeah. went um, beta test in October of 2022. Microsoft jumps in with a $10 billion purchase in January. So within like three, four months, OpenAI is now worth $20 billion essentially. And Wall Street says that if they were to go public today, it'd be about a $100 billion offering. So not too, not too bad. Wow. And Tony, who's their lead outside counsel? <laughs> you know what? That's a great question, and I do not know, but I think that's probably a good 
good thing to find out for this group. I bet they spread it around pretty good, <laughs> you know? Well, they have $10 billion that they just received <laughs> from Microsoft, so. Conflict all of big law out of representing anything opposite their interests. Right on. So ChatGPT, what does that even mean? Uh, chat, first of all, chat, they named it ChatGPT. The chat part is that it feels as if you're chatting with somebody behind the screen. Like you're, you're, when you're asking it questions, it's responding and it feels like there's a human on the other side. That's the chat part. The G stands for generative, the P stands for pre-trained, and the T stands for transformer. Now the generative part is the part that creates new responses to questions and comments. So think of generative in two parts. First of all, ChatGPT will respond to the same question and can answer it, will answer it a hundred different times, a hundred different ways if you want it to answer it that way. It answers more like a human. It's not going to have some kind of a predetermined set of responses. So the generative part is the part that helps answer like a human. Okay. And we're going to talk about hallucinations and this generative part is the reason why there's also hallucinations that are created. We'll get back into that. The P for pre-trained is that ChatGPT was fed all of this information. Essentially, it uploaded the whole internet to September of 2021 onto ChatGPT. So ChatGPT already had a ton of information and learning because it was pre-trained. And then the transformer, is the deep learning algorithm. So this is sort of like the C3PO part of ChatGPT, where it can understand and respond to multiple languages, uh, but it also, it also weighs the words when you ask the, the questions, the prompts. So the term prompt is gonna become more and more important on um, how you ask the question or the request, because it weighs the words and how you write it matters in how it responds. And as you continue to use it more and more, it learns and improves over time. So it's a very powerful tool. It's unbelievable. I, I tiptoed in there, uh, what, four weeks ago, I think, and, and was just, it's just awesome. If you haven't been there, folks, you know, go set, I'm sure Tony's gonna walk us through. Go, go lean in, check this out. It's just jaw dropping. Yeah, you, you definitely want to, if you don't already have an account, you do need to sign up for one. And here's some very quick accelerator chat GPT tips. First and foremost, you want to use it like Google. So this is Google on steroids, and you want to use it like you use Google today. I'm guessing that most people have their Google app up all the time. And when they're searching for something, they just go automatically to Google. You want to do the same thing with chat GPT. So have it open all the time so that you can get into the habit of asking yourself, can I do this faster with chat GPT? Now, because Tony, I, I got I to gotta call you. Being, as the, be, you know, working with lawyers, the skepticism, uh, this thing can listen in on my keyboard and my conversations if I have it open all the time, can it? Well, uh, it doesn't have a... It's it's it doesn't have a, a sound you 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 it doesn't have a speaker to it so it's not listening it's only taking in information that you're that you're typing up there's no yeah there's no function where it's actually listening to what you're saying I think eventually it will and you're right on that Remember when Alexa came out everyone was freaked out putting this thing in their houses because it could monitor your you know so. <laughs> This is, you, this is, you know, the lawyers, the skeptics among us, you know, are going to be really, uh, really challenging us how, how, how we can use it safely, securely. Yeah. Well, I'm curious. Do you have Google open all the time? Because is Google listening? Yes. I you hope know, so, not. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. So you, 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 the reason why we feel more comfortable with Google is because it's been around for mm -hmm. a very long time. And you know this is new, so understanding what what the uh, what it can and cannot do is very important. 
you know, an outlook is something we have open all the time, you know, I mean, right. as a matter of course. So this is going to be right up there, open all the time. You th so that you can get into the habit of saying, can I do this faster? Can I do this more efficient with ChatGPT? Because truly it, it's your imagination that's holding you back. And as more AI comes out, it really feels like um, whatever it is that you think would be nice if, if AI created it, it's going to be created because um, what you want to do is start just asking as you're in the moment, can I create this faster with ChatGPT? Can I do this faster uh, with ChatGPT? Can I become more efficient with it? And unless you get into that habit, you're never really going to understand the power of this tool for you personally. So one of the things I want to make everybody aware of is that there's ChatGPT, but Google has their ChatGPT competitor called Bard, and Microsoft also has a Bing chat, which uses ChatGPT, but you could go uh, to Microsoft Bing, Bing chat, and the advantages of Bing and Google is that, as I said with ChatGPT, the information is only up to date through September of 2021. Bing and Bard are up to date as of today. So you could check yesterday's sports scores and you would get it on Bard or Bing Chat. So there's an advantage there. Um, there are pros and cons to all. I was gonna, yeah, if I had to pick one, you know? What well, here's the pros and cons. I put together a uh, pros and cons for all the features that I'm sharing with everybody here today. And John, you have- Yeah, this will be in your follow-up, everybody, if you wanna. So you can take a look and see what the advantages and disadvantages are. And as we're talking about uh, giveaways today, an another thing that I have here is the step-by-step -step on how to set up your ChatGPT account with links, Google Bard and Bing Chat, all three if you're interested uh, to uh, try them out. Because I think are they fairly, find, I mean, it, it replace, I mean, it, it pretty much the same, or are there very distinct differences? Uh, you mentioned the currency of the information. Yeah, I, I, I beginning. still find ChatGPT as more accurate, as more accurate. <laughs> However, it is interesting. It, it is interesting to uh, ask the same question to all of them and see what kind of answers you get, because you get three different answers. I mean, they're all, you know, answering the same question, most of the time, uh, pretty much the same correctly. However, they all write it differently because of that generative part where you're always gonna get a different response every time. It's interesting. Uh, it I certainly the, is. Rosanna, which one, uh, do you have a default preference among these three? Which one are you finding? So everybody in our firm has a paid subscription to chat GPT. So I don't know, I fear like first in the industry is best. Um, and I know the information isn't as current as the others, but we're just utilizing it across the firm consistently. And one more giveaway is the ChatGPT cheat sheet that I together for everybody, um, just to give you some ideas on how to use it, how to prompt it. Because again, the prompt matters when you're putting information in. And you could you could write something like acting as a role, acting as an accountant, review these financial statements and give me all the relevant ratios that a CPA would typically look at, and then Tell me the health of the, the these financials of this company. You could do that. Um, you could uh, do you could do different types of requests. And these are some of the requests that I see a lot of small business owners using. First and foremost, just editing and grammar. Everything, everything that goes out should be edited by ChatGPT. I, I am editing every email every post, every social media response, every text, because I also have the ChatGPT app on my iPhone, and I'm making sure that that gets checked and edited before I send it out. 
things like adding, creating job descriptions, you can create full job descriptions for whatever job, whatever employee that you're struggling with finding, you can create it in, in minutes. There is no reason anymore why you shouldn't be putting your social media up all the time. ChatGPT is a perfect use case for creating posts, uh, for um, giving you ideas. It's a fantastic source for that. There's so many other ways to use it. And um, if we had our full hour, I could I would uh, show you a bunch of use cases with it, uh, but we can maybe talk about it, John, after I share this uh, part of the presentation. We go a little deeper in that. Yeah, I told Tony he had 15 minutes, and <laughs> you got to put your three-hour presentation in 15 minutes. <laughs> if I can just jump in for a second on the editing part, um, I agree wholeheartedly. We use it for all editing, but be careful. It is open AI. If you have any client information, um, client names or proprietary information, just remember it's privileged and you want to redact um, anything that you would not want the rest of the world to look at um, before throwing it in ChatGPT for editing. So that's a really important takeaway from today's presentation. It is amazing for editing. I use it all the time. Same for brainstorming, drafting, um, but the attorney client privilege rules still apply and we need to remember that it is an open AI source, meaning that it is learning as you're putting things in. Um, so, you know, if you have a really sophisticated legal argument, um, you might not want to run it through chat GPT or anything novel or proprietary. And yes, uh, you. you were talking about the investment in this, uh, Tony, earlier, and Thomson Reuters and LexisNexis both are, are into the hundreds of millions of dollars worth of investment uh, to give lawyers a little more security mm -hmm. uh, yeah. around this. There's there's going to be a lot of investment in there, and and for good reason. Um, I I agree with Rosanna. If you if you read the fine print on ChatGPT, Bard, Bing Chat, all of them say that they don't share this information with third parties. But then it says, however, we use the information on how you record, you know, what you're asking, to make for a better product. So basically, you have to assume anything you put on there could potentially get out there. So anything confidential, if you don't have a written policy, anything confidential, just don't put it out there, period. That's the first policy. Okay. Um, now I know many of you probably have heard this, a lawyer used ChatGPT to cite bogus cases. And uh, just to- The old sure. Schwartz case, yeah, there he is. <laughs> He's gotten a lot, of, a lot of unwanted attention lately. <laughs> Yes, hearing from the judge after he admitted using ChatGPT for a brief in his client's personal injury case, and uh, the brief cited six non-existent court decisions. Now, obviously, uh, we have seen and heard this, but here's the case. Here's the six cases that were cited that do not exist. Mm -hmm. They look real. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, it's official. <laughs> If it came off the internet, it must be true, yeah. Especially off of ChatGPT, which always <laughs> seems true. This is what we call AI, AI hallucinations. It's where AI systems like ChatGPT generate incorrect or invented information. Now, if we go back to the G part of generative, this is where we have the problem. We have the the... ChatGPT has been pre-trained with information and even Bard and Bing that have up-to-date information, it's been pre-trained. But when there are gaps in the system, when it cannot find the information, what the generative part tends to do is create or fill in the gaps with what it believes you want because the generative part is like, it's like a little puppy puppy and he wants to make you happy. So he's <laughs> gonna give you what he thinks, or ChatGPT is going to give you what ChatGPT thinks you want, and that is why he, uh, this lawyer, ended up with four cases that didn't exist because what basically the generative part did is said, "Well, I can't find them, so I'm going to look at some of the other cases that existed, and I'm going to create, I'm going to create fake ones, and I'm going to use those." 
because that's what I think you want me to do. So that is how that is how an hallucination happened. And you know what? I went right to ChatGPT and I said, does the generative programming allow it to fill in gaps when it doesn't have the information from what has been pre-trained? And, and Rosanna, and, you and I were talking about how risk averse most lawyers are. And this one situation, oh my goodness, risk, we're going to shut it down, ban people from using chat GPT and pretend it doesn't exist. And and in some of our Zoom calls, uh, it's two weeks ago, uh, we had managing partners and some think this is the worst thing ever. Others think, oh, no, no, this is a playing field leveler. We need to lean into this. And uh, this this is a game changer. So it's really interesting the uh, difference in opinions among firm leaders. You're going to set yeah. us straight, though, Rosanna. Well, I will. <laughs> I know you will. Um, so it it does say yes. It can it can uh, the generative part can create hallucinations because it uses patterns it learns during its pre-training phase to generate plausible sounding responses, even when it doesn't have specific information about a question. So you wanna be very mindful of that. And um, is it possible that AI like ChatGPT can cite court cases that are not real? Yes, that is possible given that GPT models like ChatGPT don't have a source of truth or access to the real-time database. They can make mistakes or hallucinate details that seem plausible but are not real. This includes generating non-existent court cases. This is reason enough where you, you have to be smart about it. And um, I don't know if you've been following this, but on June 8th, uh, Stephen Schwartz pleaded with the court not to sanction him. And uh, the, the judge had a no decision. Um, and like basically, he got a stern acknowledgement and suggested that he could still impose sanctions. I think what what happened there is that this guy is famous for all the re wrong reasons now, Stephen Schwartz, mm -hmm. and and he did so much damage to hi him and his firm that I I assume the judge was like, yeah, that's that's probably good enough. <laughs> Here's what you need to learn from that. First of all, you got to cross verify all the information that uh, you're using ChatGPT for. It is very easy to be tricked into believing that it's 100% accurate because it answers so quickly and it really does feel like, you know, because most of the time it is accurate, it feels like that it's infallible. Well, it's not. You got to remember that generative part. It's going to fill in gaps and it's going to try to please you. And that's where you can get into trouble. You want to educate yourself with AI functionality. So you want to make sure you understand how AI works and uh, be really mindful of that. And then consider professional consultation on critical tests. So you want to check everything. Basically, you're checking everything. Somebody should be editing or looking at it just to make sure it's right before you send it out. Don't just uh, blindly have ChatGPT create it and then stop. What I always tell my clients is that whenever you're using ChatGPT, it's somewhere between 50% and 98% done. And you need to look at it after that and just finish it up. So John, in our industry, in the legal industry, you know, a lot of the big firms are saying, what do we need summer associates for? You know, what do we need brand new associates for? Well, what you need them for is to cross check and to verify the information. It's very easy to look at this information and just want to copy paste it. it. It's so phenomenal. You're like, I wrote this in one second. But as Tony said, there's got to be some type of reinforcement. Um, there's got to, it's got to be someone's job to verify what you're pulling off of ChatGPT. So trust but verify, or don't okay. trust and verify. I'm all about trust and verify. It is a super efficient way of doing a lot of mundane tasks. I mean, the reality of practicing law is many of the things we do are, are repetitive tasks, same thing over and over. I'm sure everybody on this call is looking at their inbox like, oh, got to respond to all these emails. And you know, a lot of what we respond is is repetitive. So I say, you know, trust and verify, but 
it is super tempting to cut and paste, but you, you really should not do that. It's a bad idea. Definitely. Uh, here's, and, and I, every once every two months, I go into uh, Rosanna's place and we, we call them GPT parties. And we talk about the latest AI that has come out that could potentially help them, their business. And what I brought in this last time was what we call a chatbot. This is an app called Chat Thing. And here was an example. I wanted to just show them the power of, of a, this chatbot and how we can avoid hallucinations. So one of the things that they use in immigration laws is this USCIS policy manual, which is this manual online, which is very clunky. You can't, the only way you can print it is on a PDF. It's like 1300 pages long. It's apparently very hard to uh, find the information you're looking for to search and all that. So what I did was I took a PDF print of those 12, 1300 pages and I uploaded it in this chat bot. And then by doing that, we created basically a chat GPT for just the information that you're pulling in. So it's not going to pull, it's not going to try to fill in gaps because the only information it has is this USCIS policy manual. So if it doesn't have the information, it's just going to say, I'm sorry, I don't have that information. So this could be a one way to help avoid AI hallucinations is to create chatbots with only the data that you want it to look at or use, and it could make it a little bit easier for you. So one idea on how to avoid hallucinations. Now again, just like ChatGPT, you still want to avoid confidential information because um, even though this is going to be a personal account for you or your firm, it's still on the cloud. So you just want to be mindful yeah. of that. Could you use a fake email account to set up uh, if you're just trying to dip your toe in there, check it out, set up a, you know, a Yahoo or Gmail account or something oh, so you're not yes. using your true email yeah. address? Yes. Yeah. It's uh, and true. there's a there's a free version of it as well. So you could really test it if you want. Tony, I want to jump in here and uh, throw up some polling questions and uh, get Rosanna to talk to us about how she's using it and applying it at, at her firm and the lessons she's learned. Um, you got much more here? I got, we, uh... I got three minutes. Okay. Yeah, uninterrupted, I'll do three minutes real fast because we're almost done. Uh, ChatGPT, reasons you need to learn about it, it's going to disrupt every industry. Um, it's already happening. IBM to pause hiring in plan to replace 7,800 jobs with AI. Uh, Chegg shares drop 40% after the company says ChatGPT is killing its business. You're ready to see more of that. Improved efficiency. Now this, I had, I gave this to John. Yeah, share this floored me and we'll send it in the handouts, but look at this, Goldman Sachs, this, folks. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is the list of all of the different industries in America. And what this is showing is how ChatGPT like AI, AI like ChatGPT is going to uh, affect these, these industries, basically disrupt. Now, the ones on the right that um, don't have the dark blue are going to be affected far more than the ones on the left, which do have the dark blue. The light blue means that it's going to be some form of an AI complement. And the gray is it's going to probably replace completely and notice that legal is got the largest gray area so this is the this is a reason enough that everybody who's here today this is part of the reason why i think i'm here today is because to make you aware that ai is going to affect your industry more than any other industry and that is reason enough to get serious about understanding it at the least understanding it and um you know, like Rosanna, who's basically a maverick with this getting in front of it. I, I personally think that uh, you need to jump and be one of the people that are utilizing it first, because this is that arbitrage moment 
where you could take advantage of this while many of the other your legal uh, your your uh, the other law firms that are uh, probably not going to jump on this because of their fear of it are going to they're going to lose they're going to they're going to fall behind this so this, this grabbed my attention tony when you shared this uh the impact uh oh, this is goldman sachs folks this this isn't just some fly by night uh, yeah and and one creator. last thing and this is not a fad uh right now the ai industry is about 164 billion dollars in seven years it's going to be 1.6 trillion this is a 10x in seven years you tell me you, you tell me an industry that that's going to 10x in seven years there aren't many this is not a fad this is the um, this is this is the internet all over again and it is going to you're going to see it everywhere i mean it's just going to be prevalent in every every area of uh, where we work and uh, where we play so our call to actions leave it open on your desktop get into the habit of asking can i do this faster with chat gbt make this part of your weekly team meeting discussions you should you should be getting your team involved too after you create a policy on how to use it and try the free version first then choose the monthly subscription when you think it's it's useful over the annual because one of the things that i've learned is that I have made the mistake of buying an annual subscription to an AI app that I think is great, only to find out three weeks later that somebody else created another AI app that's even better. And I'm like, well, why did I do that? So buy the, try it out first and then buy the monthly subscription so that you can cancel if you need to. And um, if you want to reach me, I think there's a print out of that, but you can reach me um, here at uh, again, LLC.com. Um. Tony, thank you, uh, folks. This is uh, this is a game changer here, and uh, you know you can either uh, ignore it or jump into it. And you probably, if you know us at all, you you know where we come from, and you lean in. And so, Rosanna, with that, I wanted to let me. Uh, I got to rearrange some of my screen here, and I wanted to throw up a polling question and then turn things over to you. And just to get a sense from our audience here, um, your associates, those young lawyers, how many of them do you think use this tool, at least occasionally? And Rosanna, what do you think most of our uh, uh, your peers on today's call are going to are going to say to this question? I'm going to say less than 25 percent. And do you think they're fooling themselves? Uh, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> your uh, your prediction is correct. Uh, got a couple <clears throat> other polling questions here, and then we'll let you run here, uh, Rosanna. And uh, just to give people people a sense, and this is probably stuff you want to talk a little bit about, mm -hmm. uh, and that is training for your lawyers, your support staff on what this animal's all about and how to use it wisely. And Rosanna, as people are answering our question here, why don't you talk to us a little bit about what you guys got going on at Berardi and how you're putting it into play and what you're learning? Sure, um, so thanks again for having me today. So I'm the managing partner of Berardi Immigration Law. We're a business immigration firm based in Buffalo, New York. So we do green cards, work permit citizenship for individuals and corporations. And Tony and, I, Tony and I have been working together for the last six or seven years now. And back in April, um, he came to me and said, I, you know, I started learning more and more about this AI and said, we need to bring this to my firm and we need to bring this across the firm, not just for our lawyers. By the way, that question, look at that. Mm. Mm. Wow. Does that surprise you, Rosanna? Wow. I know. <laughs> I know. You've been doing this for a while now with your people. Yeah, so um, so back in April, we did we did a morning session for the entire firm to come and learn about ChatGPT, what it does, how it works, how it can be used. Very rudimentary, kind of an overview of what we did today. Um, and the firm has purchased paid subscriptions for everybody on the team from lawyers to admin for ChatGPT. The reason we did the paid subscriptions is that if you don't have a paid subscription, sometimes it can be hard to access 
ChatGPT because there's a lot of people online at the same time. And the paid subscriptions are $20 a month. So I felt like it was a great investment for my team if they wanted to hop on at any time, they wouldn't have to wait. So since that time in April, the team has been definitely been implementing and utilizing ChatGPT. Um, we have Tony come in every other month for our ChatGPT parties. It's about an hour and a half. And Tony speaks to three different groups, our attorneys, our paralegals, and our admin team, and shows them the latest and greatest of AI and how it can be utilized in law firms. So we all know ChatGPT, right? That's the foundation for all this. But there are a zillion different apps and platforms coming out that are built upon you know, the, the AI platform. And like the chat thing that he just showed us, for us to be able to search a USCIS policy manual that's just an albatross and so difficult to look through um, and, and know it's being searched accurately, that can save us tons and tons of time. Um, so that is definitely one of the things that we're doing. How do we use it regularly? We're using it for editing, um, emails, briefs, letters to clients, anything that we're writing, we're popping through ChatGPT. Again, redacting names, redacting anything that's super confidential or proprietary, that's not going through ChatGPT, but we're using it to edit. We're using it to brainstorm. Um, I personally used it for a leadership academy I was applying to, um, and I had to write three essays, and it was due on a Friday afternoon, and I was tired. So I wrote three sentences for each essay, and I had ChatGPT expand upon them using my original ideas, and then I edited it and submitted it, and I got accepted to the Leadership Academy. So anytime you are dreading doing something, think about, can ChatGPT do this for me or do it faster? I actually have a little post-it on my monitor that says, can ChatGPT do this faster? And I have it there just to get my brain, the muscle memory of, of thinking that way. Um, for those of you on the call today that don't do social media because A, you don't think it's important or B, you don't think you have the time, it, those are both lies. Um, you definitely have the time with ChatGPT, trust me. You can write a blog post in 30 seconds um, and you can write lots of blog posts, lots of content. It's never been easier to create content. ChatGPT will give you the, the verbal, um, if you will, content, but there's also a lot of really good platforms out there using AI that can generate pictures. All of what Tony had in his presentation were generated by an app called MidJourney. There are several of them. You can make beautiful, beautiful, royalty-free, free images that you can put on your social media. So, you know, gone are the days that you have to hire a really, really expensive um, blogger or a graphic designer. Um, this has opened up and leveled the playing field and not only can build efficiencies, but also save you a lot of money if you're very smart and strategic about doing this. Um, we are verifying all of our research. When this first came out, there's going to be people on your team that are going to be haters. They're going to say, nope. I have one on my team that said, no, I'm sorry, I used it, but it's garbage, garbage in, garbage out. And I'm like, well, you just need to verify what you're researching. And she does that now and is, is a huge fan. So there's a lot, a lot of ways to implement this in your firm. But I think you need to be smart. You need to lean into it. You do not want to be the firm in five years from now that's just getting your feet wet because you're going to be blown out of the water by your competitors. You really, really are. And lawyers are slow adapters. We hate change. We hate things that you know can you know, seem to make things efficient. Remember, I've been a lawyer for 26 years. Remember when email came out and the old partners said, I'm not doing email? Nope, I'm not using email. Nope, I'm not doing it. They're using email. Mm -hmm. We're in the same spot now. You know, when people heard about Google, uh, I don't know, I don't trust it. I wanted to keep a history of my searches. Everybody and their brother. My father's 84 years old, uses Google all the time. We're here again. We're here again. This is not going to stop. Microsoft does not invest billions of dollars. Thomson Reuters does not invest billions of dollars on a flash in a pan. They are not investing all this money because they don't have anything else to do with it. They're investing a lot of money because this is going to change how we work. And as lawyers, when you think about 
paralegals and admin, a lot of those functions, in my opinion, in the next two to three years will be automated by AI. In fact, uh, as an immigration lawyer, there is actually immigration software coming out this month um, based on AI that is purportedly going to take away a lot of paralegal jobs because wow. in immigration, we fill out a lot of forms for the immigration service. That's what our paralegals do. And this platform is powered by AI. The information will go in and automatically be populated. And, you know, instead of having eight paralegals, I may only need four. And this is happening very soon. So, yes, it's scary. Um, yes, you have to be careful. Yes, you have to have a policy. But I think this is mission critical in terms of being an innovator and bringing your firm to the next generation. Now, Rosanna, when we did this poll, 93% no training. Uh, your training, what, is that, how, what does that look like? Is it a monthly thing? Are people receiving it well? Is it mandatory? How are you training up your people to use this? So it is oh. mandatory. If you want to work here, one of our core values is continual learning. So we fit this nicely into the continual learning box. It's a metric. It's a KPI for all of our team here that you always have to be a continual learner. So it's really not optional. Tony will come in every other month. And usually yeah. he'll spend about 45 minutes with each division of the firm, admin, paralegals, lawyers. And usually, Tony can tell you, the reaction is mind blown. When he comes in, it's like, oh, what's he going to show us now? You know, what's next? What are we doing? How could we do this? Um, you know, Tony showed us a, an AI app called Fireflies that's a transcriber that you can put on any call, including this one, that will transcribe the entire conversation with accuracy it will break out who's speaking it can identify emotions it can give you a summary now we do consultations with new prospective clients and with their permission we put on fireflies rather than me furiously trying to take notes of everything they said and try to recall it i have a transcript that's a hundred percent accurate that i can go back to and refer to and put in the client file so when i'm working on the file i can say oh yes he did tell me he had a sibling in India that he wanted to bring to the United States. So think wow. of the power of that. And we, I mean, I read all the time, but I'm not on this like Tony is. So to spend the time and the money and resources to bring that into my team, what an investment to our core value of continual learning. And what an investment to my team to allow us to be innovators and to work faster and do better and really give our clients, you know, the best service possible. and freeing up some of these mundane things and replacing it so we can work at our higher best levels. Um, I'm gonna run here for just a minute here, Roseanne. I got a couple more questions I wanted to just put up. So so training is something we all think, yeah, you need to bring that into your firm. Uh, policy we've alluded to, and let's uh, ask our audience if uh, they have policy in place within their firms, firm, office level, no, we're working on it. Uh, Rosanna, what do you think? Most people have policy? I think it's a hard no. <laughs> Tony, based upon what yeah. we've seen so far? <laughs> it's, it, if there's anything in the first two, I'd be shocked. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we have about 70% of our participants in and uh, only, uh, what, 88%, uh, you know? Uh, 88%, no, no, no policy in place. Uh, you can go generate a policy on chat GPT and Uri, who's not with us today, and I were doing a Zoom call with one of our groups and right there on the fly, uh, give us a chat GPT policy for a mid-sized law firm in Georgia. 500 words or less, please. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And and I think within the policy, one of the little factoids I picked up from one of the managing partners, make sure you got a clause in there that says, you know, our legal work is provided in full compliance with applicable bar rules and regulations. And that covers you. You, you don't want to be that Schwartz firm. Mm -hmm. uh, so a policy, I think, helps protect you. And uh, I, I suppose you have a policy. Uh, Rosanna? Okay, John, I can't be everything to everyone, so uh, I'm going to say it's a work in progress. <laughs> oh, no, you let us down. <laughs> hey, I, I'm a human. Um, I'm as busy as everyone on this call, and I feel like, you know, we should get some credit for at least dipping our toe early on, but it's, it's important to have a policy. It could be very basic, even if it just says, 
anything that is utilized by ChatGPT must be verified. That's a great policy, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, John, and, and, I mean, it's uh, John, a start, and it's going to it's going to change. Tony, guidance on yeah. policy. Just a question. It, the the twelve percent that said yes, it would be great if we could get a copy or two of those. With maybe you could share with everybody to see what they have in place, because this is hey. new for everybody. It would be great. And uh, if you all, those of you who have policy, send it on to us and we're happy to showcase it as an example of policy in place and put your logo on there and present you as a forward thinking law firm. So uh, share those policies yeah. with us. You know, the early adapters, you talked this a little bit about this notion and we don't want to be in the bleeding edge, but we sure as hell don't want to be blown away. And law firms tend to lag another way to look at it. Uh, Rosanna, you want to speak to l a little bit about the importance of getting ahead of this? It's not going away. Yeah, definitely. It, it's not going away. And to ignore it, I think, is also a missed opportunity and efficiencies. Um, I think it is, a, it is a game changer in terms of how we work. And I'm super excited about some of the AI that is coming out about email management, because we all know the bane of our existence is answering a million emails a day. And I've been using an AI product for a while, actually, even before um, ChatGPT came out called Sane, S-A-N-E. And that's that's an AI platform that, that manages your inbox and only filters the important thing. You train it of what's important and it puts all your other stuff in different filters. And boy, game changer. So you're only looking at those non-important things maybe once a day versus being interrupted all the time. So yep. definitely look at it as a way of being more efficient. Um, we all work very long, hard hours as lawyers, and you know this can free us up from some of the mundane things. Um, this is a question we asked in our in our Zoom calls. I referenced the Zoom calls a couple of times. People who come to our live events, uh, we offer these Zoom conference calls so people can carry on the conversation. So this has been a hot topic. We asked this one in a recent call. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put the poll out there. Uh, what's going to be the impact of this tiger on the profession uh, in the long term? What do you think? Uh, Rosanna, what's your prediction, the long term impact? You well, talked about I'm jobs. Say, <laughs> I'm, I mean, there are, look, there's a lot of positive things about it. If you're, if you're talking about jobs being um, cut and people being replaced, I don't want to say that that's a positive thing. I think we're going to see that, though, as part of the impact on the legal profession. Tony, what do you think this crowd's going to say to the impact uh, of, well, of uh, this on our profession? My first thought is that you, you need to think this way. ChatGPT is not going to replace you. The people that use ChatGPT will. And if it, it's really the, the ones that are using it, it's going to be more positive. The ones that aren't, it's going to be negative. Looks like uh, they're drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, you know, get in front of it, lean into it, learn it, use it, be smart, put policy in place. Uh, yep. You talked a little bit about Yen LLC, Tony. Yes. Uh, yes. And it begs, what's Yen? What's Yen? <laughs> it's it's short for you're the expert now. The idea here is uh, that um, again. Working off of my CPA background, my CMA background, a lot of business owners, you guys are great at what, you, what you've what you created and what you've grown, but at, there gets to a point where business owners realize, I need to learn more about my accounting, my finance, I need to know how all of these other things work in business, and that's where I come in, and that's really what You're the Expert Now is all about, is helping business owners learn how to read and understand their financials because the first step is to understand how to read your financials so that you can finally use that information to improve profitability and cash flow and forecasting because financial statements has less to do with the past and far more to do with the future. And if you know how to read them, you can make uh, better, just better decisions in your business. So um, we're going to send a couple of things Tony has uh, forwarded on to us. Uh, the cheat sheet uh, we brought up on the screen, that graph about the impact of this uh, artificial intelligence on various uh, segments of the economy. And uh, as well, Tony's kind enough to offer uh, a consultation. Uh, anyone who wants to talk with him more, 
uh, as a follow-up. And so we'll send you the link so you can get in touch with him. It'll be in your follow-up. Uh, we'll probably get it out Friday. But uh, Tony, thank you for that offer. And uh, I think sure uh, I would advise folks take advantage of that. Very kind offer. Um, Rosanna, thank you. Thank you very much. And Tony as well. Uh, interesting conversation. So much to cover and uh, it seems never enough time. Uh, we do invite your feedback, everybody, on today's session. Uh, topics for the future. If you want more on artificial intelligence, chat GPT, do let us know. We'll have the on-demand recording out to you in short order. Handout materials. Uh, we are going to be doing the recaps, thanks to our friends at Nine Sales. So we'll be doing a write-up of today's conversation. Uh, our next webinar will be September 20th, and uh, our friends at Affinity Consulting will be uh, presenting. And I'm not sure what our topic is yet, but stay tuned. Uh, it'll be on the third Wednesday in September. Here's our contact information. Uh, I even left Uri up there. Uh, but uh, feel free to reach out. Rosanna's kind enough to offer uh, her uh, perspective. Anyone wants to reach out, learn more. And uh, so thank you again to our faculty. And those are just some more of our uh, calls. Tony, thank you. Uh, Rosanna, thank you. Uh, you all have a good rest of the week. And thanks for uh, being with us today, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Take Bye. care.